All right, for more on this standoff that has sparked an ongoing national debate, let's bring in founder and CEO of Webimax, Ken Wisniewski. All right, Ken, Hi, so... Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. So give us the lay of the land. We have this standoff between Apple and the FBI, and it comes down primarily to the biggest factor being privacy. But public opinion appears to be split. So what's happening here? I think there's a fine line between privacy and security, and I think it's one of these good examples right now that's come up that's really having to define what national security is and what privacy is, and that's what the battle's all about. And with that being said, U.S. voters rated terrorism as one of their top concerns, but obviously fighting terrorism also requires better monitoring. And most tech firms are firmly siding with Apple. Bill Gates is one of the major names, though, that says Apple should make an exemption and perhaps find a compromise. Is that even possible? That's the difficult part. I, I think the, the, the challenge that Apple seems to be faced with is in they're, they're in a no-win situation. Obviously, I think everyone's concerned about terrorism, terrorism as a threat and ultimately being able to provide uh, security for everyone by being able to provide additional information. But unfortunately, in doing so, I believe Apple feels that could it open a gateway where it could actually work in reverse, where there could potentially be more hazards caused by it by ultimately cracking this iPhone. And as you're saying, Apple's saying it's being asked to create a software that doesn't exist and which could open the door, as you're saying, for more terrorists to access any iPhone. But the FBI is saying that by not complying, terrorists are being told, hey, if you want to hide your activities, just use an iPhone. So how do they strike that balance? Who's right? Uh, unfortunately, I think both sides are right to a certain degree. But the reality is, is that I, I feel that crime right now and what's gone on uh, is more advanced than in some cases the the people that we have trying to solve it. It just moves at such a rapid rate to keep up to date on everything that's changing and evolving makes it very difficult for, in this case, the FBI or law enforcement to really understand the ways and the means by which to be able to prevent and ultimately be able to to control some of these situations. Yes, as you're saying, it's difficult when you're when you're already a step behind. So, in your opinion, what do you think would perhaps be a better approach to protect people? maybe without forcing these companies to have to violate people's privacy? I think that probably one of the best solutions would be for the law enforcement here in the United States uh, to invest more in technology and understanding technology. So when these situations arise, they have a protocol where they can ultimately be able to uh, utilize this type of information more effectively and not find themselves necessarily in these type of situations. Let's be honest, encryption's only gonna to continue to get better and better. It's only continue to be a scenario that comes up more frequently. And I think this is just the first of, unfortunately, many scenarios that will come up unless we find a way to be able to, to react better to these situations. Now, another, another issue that did come up during the hearing was perhaps Apple keeping its marketing edge. And Apple's general counsel said that comment made his blood boil. But with the smartphone market being so competitive, isn't that a fair point? It's a fair point. Um, you know, I think there's always a level of conspiracy theories that, uh, you know, if, if Apple does comply to this, does that ultimately mean that uh, everyone will have to move to a new iPhone that has even better encryption since the encryption's, you know, both basically been broken on the existing iPhone? I believe that in this particular case, that's a little bit far-fetched, and I feel that, unfortunately, it places Apple again in a position where their interest in national security is questioned, when in reality, you know, they're a, they're a huge business that's trying to protect one of their biggest assets, which is their encryption. And just quickly, Ken, that being said, we already give up a certain amount of privacy freely to phone companies, social media, even when we shop online. And terror, ex a terror attacks did exist even before the existence of the iPhone. So what makes this case so significant? I think it's clear now that iPhones uh, are being utilized to a large degree to orchestrate these terror attacks. And ultimately, I think that the concern that the FBI and law enforcement has is that this is uh, ultimately going to be a problem that only continues and continues to get worse. And by hopefully maybe being able to find some compromise has been suggested, they can have some access to that, to that data to hopefully prevent other scenarios from, from transpiring. That's definitely an issue we'll be keeping an eye on. Thank you there to Ken Wisniewski, CEO and founder of WebMax. Thank you.